Hello friends, David Miller, Phoenix, Arizona multimedia artist, photographer, educator. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. I got a book in the mail this week. It is by Frank Ockenfels III. It's the third of his collection of his sketchbooks, photo montages, things he does with his photographs. And if you don't know Frank Ockenfels III, he's a great guy. You should get to know him. He's also an incredibly prolific and well-known photographer within circles of people who pay attention. So I did a video about Annie Leibovitz's work. Uh, Frank is the same level as Annie Leibovitz and works with the same caliber of celebrity actors, actresses. Uh, he's done all of the AMC programs recently, including Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Walking Dead, so on and so forth. Uh, prior to that, he was a photographer for Saturday Night Live, Rolling Stone, and uh, he collaborated frequently with David Bowie and shot Nirvana, R.E.M. So Frank has been around. And he's also the only photographer I've ever taken a workshop from. I took it in 2015 at the Palm Springs Photo Fest. Uh, I think I had four days with Frank. I think it was supposed to be, a, a, maybe it was three days, not quite sure. What I got out of the time that I was with him was uh, my style really loosened up. I think up to a point I was trying to impress other people with technical know-how and also um, be very rigid in presentation. And not to say that I didn't do good work before I took Frank's workshop, but I can definitely see after I took Frank's workshop, um, there's a little more of like a spontaneity and anarchy that allowed itself in. And this was a time when I was really transitioning towards uh, instant film and I can just see this organic change. But anywho, let's go ahead and take a look at Frank's sketchbook. This is stuff he did with photos that didn't necessarily end up as part of whatever article or project he was contributing to, but things that he, in his creative mania, uh, just attacked with scissors, masking tape, and collage, so on and so forth. This is like the purest version of Frank Ockenfels III. Let's check it out. So right off the bat, we've got the cover. Uh, it's very difficult to recognize the person underneath the layer of mark making that Frank has put on this, but that's David Lynch and probably shot with a really uh, larger size film, maybe a four by five or an eight by 10. Uh, the layers of mixed media on top of this, you got some sort of like chalk, you've got this white paint, maybe a white out pen to it. And then that's David's hair, I'm assuming. Uh, it's part of the photograph, but it definitely looks like scratchy marks that go up. So. Right away, I can tell that Frank's vision is the same no matter whatever media he applies to uh, each of these pieces. Probably Frank's most famous piece, the one that shows up the most when you Google him, uh, Angelina Jolie spread across two pieces of paper with the red X on her lips, which I think was done on set because I can see that X curling underneath her lips there and then a little bit of handwriting. Um, this is some kind of art journal. You can see the spine that runs straight down the center of it. Uh, there's so many levels of presentation in this particular image, and it's not just limited to the image that's with on the pages. You can see the stuff pouring out from the side, little bits of postcard, uh, some plastic wrap, some kind of newspaper cutout, and I think it's a stunning piece of work. Um, the color scheme itself is super unnatural. There's no pure white, not even on her eyes. I'm not really sure what color Angelina Jolie's eyes are in reality. This is just a complete mystery, you know? And if you were somebody who liked to generate stories out of uh, imagery, out of like things that just occur to you in your random parts of your life, if you came across this work spread across two journals, with a mystery woman, the weird color, almost like a drowned person color, and that red X across her lips as if she was censored. You could come up with a lot of really interesting, mysterious stories out of just this image alone. On these pages, we have some water damage. Uh, we have writing that doesn't seem to make any sense at all. And it's a picture 
of a person with something shaved or erased into their head. It's like a sketched version and then the negative over here. And having been in with Frank in person and knowing that he had this Type 55 um, film that would give you a positive print and a negative at the same exact time out of a 4x5 camera, I'm pretty sure this is how this one's achieved. It's the Type 55 and then both presentations on each side of the journal pages. Something like this, which has, as far as I can tell, no photographic component whatsoever, uh, probably done on an airplane using the kind of safety guideline material that you get um, from the back of an airplane seat. Uh, this really reminds me of the artwork for Radiohead's OK Computer, and I'm sure that Frank would take that as a compliment. Pictures of himself, mixed languages, Frack Auchenfels, so many journal pages represented here, some sideways, some upside down. Truthfully, once you get into this vibe of dismissing the purity of an image and saying, you know, it's okay if things are sideways or messed up or if there's chaos, um, it's really hard to go back to any sort of like clean approach to photography and say, uh, I want this to be 100% pure. I want the lighting to be great. I want everybody in the picture to look very attractive and uh, well-groomed. I mean, once you get into this stuff, it just feels wrong to clean up all the rough edges of your artwork. You have a photograph with this diffusion material put on top. You have part of the real photograph showing, and then you have Pencil, but it doesn't cover everybody. It only covers this particular individual. It's so mysterious and minimalist. And it's of the band Wilco. Uh, there's really one main guy in Wilco. So you can see here, W-I-L-C-O. And you have Jeff Tweedy here. When you have one central songwriter, band leader, band member, uh, I think this is totally fine. Now to damage your artwork this way, actually requires a lot of bravery, in my opinion. Uh, I know what it's like to fear making the mark because you don't want to totally trash your piece. And of course, there are there is no like art police out there that'll come and get you and say, oh, you made this horrible remark. You you destroyed this and you're never going to be successful. Um, and we're taking back your license to be an artist. I mean, that's not real. And as far as like drawing goes, if you mess up your drawing with ink, you can just redraw it and be fine. But uh, I really admire anybody who's willing to go totally wild on this. I also like these sideways uh, figures, this one in particular, because this one in particular, because whatever's coming out of his mouth crosses over onto this next one. And I think all of these are self portraits of Frank. I certainly recognize his head shape and his glasses here and here. I think it's also brave when you're working with people who um, might be celebrities, whether they're musicians or actors, that you do something that's sort of chaotic and insane to the pieces because there's way too much reverence for people who are uh, well-known and famous in my opinion. And to have like that perfectly airbrushed, perfect picture of Scarlett Johansson, I just can't take it, you know? A lot of the people in these images are well-known and uh, part of what made them into celebrities, well-known, well-paid actors, actresses, sports figures, musicians, and so forth, is that they had this charisma about them. So why not do something interesting with them? If you have a charismatic person, they make great subjects for great art, make great art with them. Don't just make the cleanest looking version that's so similar to what everybody else has ever shot that there's nothing to those images and everything to what Frank's doing. And this page is special to me because uh, this happens to be a really good friend of mine, Alina Lee, a model formerly known as Thumbelina. She worked with Frank on multiple occasions and I had known of Alina before I took Frank's workshop, but uh, at Frank's workshop, he mentioned her and gave her like a glowing review. And shortly afterward is when I got in touch with her. and. We've not only been good friends since then. There you have it, one of my big influences, the only guy I've ever taken a workshop from. And I'm so happy that I have a huge uh, physical artifact of Frank's work next to me at night that 
I look at almost every time before I go to bed uh, is really inspiring. Stuff I like to think about, dream about, and who knows, this might be the direction that I end up taking my work, especially uh, in the current situation where I'm not able to go out and do as many shoots as I used to. I have two decades of work that I can ransack and ravage and create like, a whole new aesthetic the way that Frank has in this book. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.